There is one motorcycle brand that has captured the imagination of millions of people around the world, and yet we have never featured it on the Yami Noob channel, despite thousands, maybe tens of thousands of comments telling us that we absolutely need to ride one before we continue dunking all over it. And we got to thinking, what's gonna be the motorcycle that's gonna really change the Yami Noob game here? What is gonna be the thing that's gonna lead us to one million subscribers? And we thought that there is no motorcycle better than this one right here. It's a Royal Enfield Continental GT. And we think this video is gonna be pretty good. Wait, I'm kind of drawing at straws here to what we're gonna do today for this video. I mean, what do you what do you got on your notes over there? Is there anything good? Uh, I've written down a couple ideas, but I, I really think, can we compare it against something? Maybe the fire blade, is it fast enough? I mean, it, dude, it's really slow. Yeah. Like, really slow. Oh, Jesus, okay. Um, maybe, okay, so it's so slow. Jigsaw 250, Scrambler, something dumb. Can we, did you do I mean, that? It's not really a dumb bike either, though. Josh, do you have any, any ideas? Uh, no, I'm really busy. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you got, you got important stuff to take care of, don't worry. Okay, Spike, what if we, okay, let me do some of my notes here. What if we, let me see here. Okay, what if we look at curb appeal, mm -hmm. performance, okay, value, there we go, and the sound and the character of the bike. That sounds good to me. Let's do it. Before we get into this groundbreaking moment on Yami Noob where I went out and finally tested a Royal Enfield in the hopes it would get the Indian Army out in force to get us to that 1 million subscriber count, I need to tell you guys about our giveaway Honda Fireblade. November 2nd is the very last day you can get entered to win this thing, and we are running a special promotion on our merch store and our gear and parts store as well, where if you use the code FIREBLADE3X, you will get 3X entries for every dollar you spend. We sell tires, oil, helmets, gloves, all kinds of things that are good for motorcyclists. But if you want a quick and dirty entry, you can always get yourself some of our killer merch designs and use that same code FIREBLADE3X and get entered to win. Time is running out. November 2nd is the last day to get entered to win a $28,000 leader bike. Hit the links down below and don't delay. Now, let's see what the Royal Enfield GT650 was all about. Probably just as right. good as a Fireblade. Time to go uh, ride this Royal Enfield... <laughs> Continental GT 650, 650 Continental GT thing, whatever. Um, pretty handsome looking little bike, you gotta say. About to test its performance, see what it's all about. Big shout out to the, the young man who let us borrow this motorcycle, by the way. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. I met you on Instagram, and now we've got this bike. Let's start her up. Big note, I want to say, I want to say really quick, big note. It's uh, straight piped, because he's like 16, so... Yeah, this thing's not supposed to be this loud. All right. Okay. Getting our initial bearings here on this motorcycle. Nice skinny gas tank. Let's uh, let's take off with it and see how it does, shall we? Where does this clutch grab? Right around there. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right, okay. Getting along with it here. You know, when you're on the bike and you've got earplugs in and a helmet on, uh, it's actually a pretty pleasant sound. It's got this little 648cc parallel twin doing the Lord's work here, propelling us down the road. And uh, yeah, I'm about to take this thing out. I'm gonna give you guys a nice raw first impression of it. Controls, how it feels, all that sort of thing. Power comes on nice and linear. Not much in the way of top end. This thing redlines at about 7,000 RPM, which for a motorcycle is pretty low. Side to side here, uh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with this thing, you know? 
the braking feel is pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. This feel through the lever is uh, pretty squishy, pretty spongy. I don't feel like I have a ton in the way of braking performance, but uh, it makes a nice, lovely little sound down low. I've got a gas gauge, which is pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, the seat is kind of comfortable. I like it. Normally I do these first impression rides having ridden the bike a little bit and I talk about it, you know, post hoc because I've actually developed my thoughts around it. But someone in the comments said that they wanted to see proper first ride impressions. And uh, yeah, we're doing that today. We're gonna do a nice roll on here with the bike, wide open. I would say that's adequate power for a beginner-ish motorcycle. That's nothing that's gonna scare you or get up and away from you. And uh, yeah, I would say this thing has quite a bit of personality about it. It definitely, definitely feels like a Triumph Bonneville you have at home. And I mean that in a nice way, guys. I don't want you to think that, I just think that the Royal Enfield here is uh, just a dollar store version of a Bonneville because it's not, but it, the, the similarities are very striking, you know? Steel cradle frame, parallel twin engine, similar dynamics to the way it makes its torque and its power and stuff. Uh, everything's just a little bit cheaper and chintzier feeling on the Royal Enfield, but uh, we have a whole section where we're gonna talk about value on this thing. And there's a lot to discuss. Now, this motorcycle has a 130 section rear tire on some very dubious rubber. I can't remember exactly the tires that are on this thing, but I remember I've seen them before. Yeah, not much in the way of a blip there, huh? <laughs> but you know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm of the opinion, and I think Shade Tree Surgeon is too, that pretty much anything with two wheels, I will give it a shot. I will try it out. I'll get it going. Holy crap, these brakes are bad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to not have a smile on your face when you're on any motorcycle. <laughs> Power is hilarious, it doesn't do anything. I'll tell you what, since it's on these skinny tires and this very, very budget front suspension, it's exciting to ride in a way that you wouldn't expect. Uh, it's... <laughs> kind of exciting in the way of like an old crap bike being exciting because this thing is kind of an old crap bike and there's nothing wrong with that but you have to really realize that this is a motorcycle that is practically ancient in the way that it goes down the road um, but it's got a lot of modern features and amenities that you know are kind of nice EFI no carbs here no drum brakes or anything Maybe the rear is a drum, I don't know. Um, but I know the front is a, a caliper. I'll give you honest, we picked up this bike. I, I wanted to do a very raw impression on it. I, I normally do a bunch of research, try to prepare these things, but I thought this would be fun if we uh, kind of flipped the script a little bit and then just, just enjoyed the ride because that's what everyone tells me the Royal Enfields are all about. It is about you jumping on this motorcycle and enjoying it. And <laughs> I am enjoying it, you know? It's a motorcycle, it's hard to not enjoy it. And I love thinking about the fact that this is a, like a 16 or 17 year old kid's motorcycle. This is, dude, if I was 16 or 17 and I had this as a bike, I would feel like the coolest kid at school. I had to wait until I was a grown man with a job and a degree to go get my motorcycle because <laughs> uh, my dad did not let me go get a bike when I lived back at home. But you know, I, I actually really like the low end grumble of this thing. If you're not working it too hard, it's actually really rewarding. The front brakes are atrocious though. <laughs> I, got, I gotta say, the front brakes are really not very good. This fuel through the lever, the braking power, it's only got a single disc up front, uh, not very good. You know, it's not too dissimilar from the Harley ethos, is that, you know, you're not meant to be crushing performance with this thing. I mean, look, it just, it makes this nice velvety sound goes down the road, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I guess what's not to like, you know? And I think the reason that we have clowned on these bikes so much is that, you know, when you look at other motorcycles in this category, in this Neo Retro category, you've got some seriously good bikes. Things like the XSR 700, the, uh, you know, 
I guess the Z650 RS to an extent now, the Triumph Bonnevilles, the Ducati Scramblers, and yeah, I get it, those bikes are a lot more expensive, but you do get what you pay for, and I'll tell you what, a Bonneville's front brakes do not feel like this, they feel a lot better. And so this motorcycle is one of those that I feel like it works really well in isolation. If you, if you have a Royal Enfield and you, and you don't try to think about other motorcycles, you don't try to compare other motorcycles, dude, you'll have a great time. This bike is fun, it's flickable, it's relatively nimble for what it is. I think dry, they claim 447 pounds, and that's probably wet, you're looking at 480 to 490 because this thing is air-cooled and uh, I imagine it holds a ton of oil. <laughs> I, I just can imagine that right now. I don't know the gas capacity, but uh, I imagine it's pretty decent. It does make a pretty good little sound, I gotta say. Um, even with this straight pipe configuration, I would put an exhaust on it, but I know that the young man who owns this motorcycle, uh, you know, dude, you're 16, 17, just straight pipe your bike, who cares? You know, come on, have some fun. But yeah, why don't we uh, why don't we romp on it here a little bit? See what our our performance is like on this Royal Enfield here. So far, I'm kind of impressed, honestly. It's better than I thought it would be. You are not going to be setting any top speed records with the Royal Enfield, but chances are, if you're thinking about buying one of these, I don't think you really plan on it. Uh, a nice feature that I like on this bike that I noticed when we had in the shop is it's got uh, some little rubber inserts for the foot pegs. You know, being that it's a kind of lumpy, air-cooled 650 twin in a steel cradle frame, you'd expect a, a lot of vibration, but it actually doesn't vibrate that much. It actually gives you pretty good vibrations, honestly. And, uh, you know, I think it's interesting that we, when we had it in the shop, both Joe and Whitney, who are more about that vintage retro kind of styling, they were kind of head over heels, this thing. And Joe actually was uh, looking at how much they cost and if he could get one because he was like, oh, how much are they? Holy crap. But again, we're going to get into value later on in this video. But Overall, I man, I gotta say, it's better than I thought it would be, that's for sure. And I think a lot of people have told us that, and we kind of meme on the Royal Enfields, but, you know, a motorcycle is a motorcycle. And I think if you're on two wheels, that is all that matters. Flicking it through some twisty bits here. Got a truck in front of me, so there's not much I can do, but the Royal Enfield's pretty good on the side of the tire. It holds a line. It's on some very dubious rubber with some very dubious tire sizes, but, you know, truth be told, it's doing perfectly fine. And it's interesting, you know, I tell you guys this a lot, that motorcycles will, they will, they will tell you what they want you to do. Uh, this motorcycle is definitely not telling me to carve up twisties and, and rail on this bike or anything like that. I really am kind of committed to just checking out the scenery and enjoying my ride and, and loving life on this thing, which is a... A great feeling. It reminds me a lot of my desert sled in that I just want to ride it around and bop around and enjoy it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, man, pretty enjoyable experience on this Royal Enfield. I'm not going to lie. Now, whether or not you're rolling around on some fire-breathing beast like this Royal Enfield right here, or something nice and tame like this Supermoto, you need to get yourself a phone mount for your ride. This is actually my motorcycle right here with my rock form mount that I bought with my own hard-earned doubloons. And I ride around with my phone on my handlebars all the time. It's super convenient when I'm leading rides for the weekend to just have my phone there ready to rock and roll. I also have myself this nice little rock form wallet, which I carry around all the time now. Now they don't just make accessories for your phone or cool wallets, they got a whole bunch of other stuff on their website. Click the link down below and check out their entire range of products and use the code YN25 to get 25% off your order. Big shout out to Rockform for supporting this video. Now let's get this motorcycle out in the public and see what the average man in the street has to say about this motorcycle right here. All right guys, we're trying to get unsolicited uh, like audience feedback here on what people think of this bike to figure out the curve appeal of this machine. Royal Enfields have a pretty good style about them. We're trying to see what people think, so let's find out. 
What do you think of this motorcycle? I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Wow, okay. Yeah, I love the color, I yeah. love the setup. Okay. What, well, is, what do you guys, what is this all about? No, what would you wager this cost? Oh, I would say this. Okay. Wow. That's a, that's a, okay. Am I in the ballpark? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is like five grand. Okay. Yeah. But that's, that's amazing you think it's that high. Yeah. So we just have a simple question for you. What do you think of this motorcycle? Well, I heard it drive it up. It sounded awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, man, it really caught my eye. It's got a great look about it too. Cool. Kind of like a cafe region. Hi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. What would you wager it, uh, it costs? Hmm. You know, I'm not moving much of a... Estimator on them, but yeah. I would give personally, I would give between 15 10 to 15. 10 to 15? 15. All right, wow. cool. Yeah, so that's uh, interesting feedback. Yeah, I mean, what well, is the price? Uh, I believe it's about five to six, it, right? It, it is $6,700. Yeah, wow. well, there you go. See, I'm not much. I would do. <laughs> Looks great, sounded great. Yeah, you know. okay, we just have two questions for you. Okay. okay, what do you think of this motorcycle? You really like it? Yeah. She really likes it. Uh, what do you like about it? The color and the contrast. Okay. Of the line, white lines. What would you wager it costs? I don't know. Give me a ballpark figure. Just like a normal price bike then. No. Like more than one? More than a normal. Okay, more than normal price. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, that's good feedback. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Have a good one. Do you like this bike? Do you like the way it looks? I do like the way it looks. Okay. What do you like about it? I like it looks like a Rambler, like a old Triumph kind of jam. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you wager it costs? Based on the question, <laughs> maybe like twelve five. Twelve five. Okay. Maybe this bike actually retails grand? for like five to six grand. Really? Yeah. But okay. people have been eyeballing it a little bit higher, so it appears to have a lot of curb appeal. So. Yeah, it looks sexy. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a classic British bike. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what it is. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate Yo, man. it. Hey, appreciate you guys. Yeah. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> You're hoping someone yeah, right That wasn't it. the giveaway. Yeah. I just, I Sweet. Just shirt. <laughs> so we're riding this Royal Enfield Continental GT650 today. Um, we're trying to figure out, you know, what do you think of this bike? Do you like the way it looks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it looks great. Yeah. Cool. What would you wager it costs? Probably sixteen grand. Sixteen wow. grand. What do you think? Probably like eight or nine. Eight or nine? You're yeah. much closer. You're the closest one of the day. Right, everyone's right. been everyone's been in the five digits. This thing is about yeah. sixty five hundred bucks. Okay. Which is all right, guys. Royal Enfield is definitely known as a value driven brand. We see that in the comments that a lot of people flock to these motorcycles because they are so cheap. This one actually comes in at sixty two hundred bucks, right? Yeah, so this model comes in at 6,200 bucks, but you can get them all the way up to 7,000. And the only appreciable difference there is the color. You change whether or not you want the shiny chrome tank or whether or not you want one of these nice color schemes here. And I think this is one of the things that draws the eye so well to this motorcycle. It's the paint on here rivals some of the more five digit motorcycles that I've seen. Harley Davidson. <laughs> I mean, it's every bit as good as a Harley Davidson paint job here. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're looking at this category of bikes and this retro, authentic retro, even in the case of this Royal Enfield, you want something that's gonna turn heads. And I think that if you're cross shopping stuff like a Harley, this Royal Enfield makes a great case for itself for bang for buck. I think that if you're looking at something like a Sportster 883, a Triumph Bonneville, those sorts of things, you should definitely look at a Royal Enfield because these these things provide about as much motorcycle for as about 60% of the price. And we think that, you know, some of the features on this bike, like this tank right here coming into contact with this cowl, the paint job, as Spite mentioned, you know, you can tell where the budget parts are. You know, levers are a little cheap, triple clamps a little cheap, but the stuff that really matters looks a little more upmarket, right? Yeah, and they did a good job of hiding the cheap stuff on this motorcycle. So while you might notice that the triple looks a little bit cheap, the dash that you're looking at does not look cheap. And this draws your eye more than this does while you're riding it. So I think they did a good job of hiding where they cut corners on this motorcycle. And you know, even though it's got the Vibri brakes on here, which are the cheaper brakes, I mean, it is a good looking caliper on here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we think that the Royal Enfield makes a pretty good case for itself in terms of value. So we give it a nice thumbs up.
One of the most important facets when it comes to getting your motorcycle is the sound that it makes. We often get really uh, excited by the sound of a juicy V4, a high revving inline four, or in this case, a 270 degree parallel twin that's supposed to sound burly and angry. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we dog on the Kawasaki 650 so much Ugh. or any single uh, parallel twin that's using that 180 degree crank just does not sound very good. And thankfully, we do have that juicy 270 degree in here. And I got to say, I really do like the sound that this motorcycle produces, even though we do have a bit of a raw sound because we don't have any exhaust on here. Yeah, as I mentioned in my vlog, the young man who owns this motorcycle uh, straight piped it because he's like 16 or 17 years old. But when you flip the key here and start this thing up, I think it has a pretty nice idle sound. Let's kind of burly, kind of powerful, you know? Once you rev it up a little bit, it's way too loud because it's straight piped, as we'll see here. That's a bit much. Yeah. A bit much in my book. It kind of uh, reminds me of the Jigster 250 a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but I do, when I'm rolling around, feel like I'm on a non uh, single crank pin Harley almost with yeah. the sound. It has, it has that very air-cooled, low, lopey sound to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds very good. It sounds very classic, very authentic, which are very uh, important words, I believe, to the Royal Enfield consumer. It's very true, yeah. And uh, along those lines, this motorcycle has tons of character, honestly, for being a little beginner bike, ostensibly. It actually uh, produces quite a bit of emozione because of its steel cradle frame and the sound that it makes and its air-cooled nature. It's got way more personality and flavor than something like a CBR 500R, for example, or a Z650. Um, I, I will stand by that, which is not something I ever thought I'd say, but it actually is a charming little bike. Yeah, when I was riding it around yesterday, bringing it back, one of the first things that struck me was how it didn't just feel like any other motorcycle. No. It felt very unique. A lot of times you get beginner bikes that feel very ubiquitous. Uh, you can't really tell the difference between one or the other. A any real differences are just like numbers on a spreadsheet. This bike feels very different. Yeah. And you know, it handles different. It's got a little bit of a wobble to it because you know, it's this big heavy lump of a thing. On these skinny little tires. Yeah. And, <laughs> but it feels a little bit more just characterful, which you don't get for most beginner bikes. No. So it's kind of cool. It definitely has a charm and a flavor of it all of its own, a bit of a retro bike charm to it as well. Kind of reminds you of how raw motorcycles used to be, you know, before they all got massaged into Kawasaki 650s, you know, coming off an assembly line. It's actually got a lot of flavor to it, yeah. I feel like a lot of that, though, does come to the fact that this is an older motorcycle through and through. For sure. It may have some modern components sprinkled on top, like fuel injection, these bribery bi brakes, uh, you know, the new AG looking dual analog tack that's a throwback, but a lot of this isn't throwback, it's just old. Yeah, this is not as much neo retro as it is just retro. It's like retro neo. Yeah, it's retro neo, exactly. <laughs> uh, but we feel like it's, you know, in the camp of sound and character and flavor and some of those intangibles when it comes to motorcycling, the Royal Enfield does a pretty good job, I gotta say. Yeah, it was thoroughly surprising how much personality it had. I was kind of expecting it to be just motorcycle, and yeah. it's not. Yeah. With all that being said, let's take this thing back in the shop. We've spent the whole day riding it around. Let's collect our final thoughts and come up with the idea of whether or not we were wrong about Royal Enfield. Are we about to eat crow? Maybe. <sighs> Spite, wrapping the day up here with the Royal Enfield, and I think everyone wants to know, were we wrong or were we right? Hmm. This is going to be a bit of a cop-out, I yeah. think. We I, I were... know what you're going to say. We were wrong about some stuff, but we were right about a lot of stuff on That's this true. motorcycle. I think we were half wrong and half right about these bikes as a whole. Uh, some things we were right about. It is unbelievably slow. Oh uh, it is not a performance bike. It's not trying to be a performance bike, but a Bonneville would absolutely annihilate this thing. And it would make sense. 300 extra cc's, a bigger bike, more power. Liquid cooled. Liquid cooled, more modern, makes sense. But I was not prepared for how how uninspiring the performance actually is. It's got torque down low, that's about it. Kinda yeah. makes it like a Harley in that way. Yeah, I mean, even the torque down low when I was riding it wasn't that noticeable. It felt uh, very lethargic to get up and go. Yeah. Um, it, I think 
uh, given the nature of how heavy this motorcycle is from stock, we're talking, they claim 330 or 437 uh, dry, which yeah. because it's a big uh, air and oil cooled motorcycle, it needs a lot more oil in it. So it's going to be really it's about heavy. 480. Yeah, yeah, call it 480. Then with my weight on top of it and only 47 horsepower, it is a really dog slow motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah, that's about what would happen if you were to jump on a KLR 650 or something like that. There were some know? points when I was looking up a hill and being like, wait, am I on the Jixxer 250? <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, I gotta grab a couple gears down. <laughs> yep, <laughs> gotta prepare for this hill. Now, some points that were unexpected on this bike is kinda how charming and interesting it is to ride. Uh, I think there's lots of bikes that this beats out. I, I honestly would rather ride this than a Z650. Oh, hell yeah. A CBR 500. Yep. A Sportster 883. <laughs> For me, those three bikes, this is better. It's cooler. So the only reason I would take the Sportster over this is because the Sportster just, it, it has that je ne sais quoi that really tickles me yeah. just right. I get you. I this get you. thing, I, I really do enjoy the way the engine sounds and the way it feels. It's very smooth and it does sound good. I challenge any normie out there to tell me the difference between this sound and a Harley V-Twin. You really yeah. only tell the difference at idle because you know that's when you can really hear the single crank pin. Yeah. Uh, this has a lot of that old school Harley air cooled quality that you don't get out of modern motorcycles. Yeah. Um, but it's just again, I I come back to it being just a little bit slow here and there and think, well, it's not a sport bike. It's really just a cruiser. Yeah. It point. is just a cruiser with a standard seating position and. You know, some of the things I think we're also right about, like these these things, just everything feels so cheap. Um, but that's kind of for a reason. This motorcycle is not very expensive, and that's why a lot of people buy them. Mm -hmm. uh, plain and simple, guys. It's simple economics in action. You drop the price on something enough, demand swells, right? It's very, very simple stuff. And uh, I think this makes a really good case for itself for someone's first bike. The guy that owns this bike is like a 16 or 17 year old kid, right? Like that's, yeah. I mean, I if I had this as a 16 year old, I'd feel like the coolest guy ever. Oh yeah, I mean this motorcycle, what Royal Enfield did here is they spent their money really wisely yes. on this bike. The paint job is killer. It's really good on this bike. People thought it cost $25,000 on the street, so they yeah. did a great job I getting mean, the, that paint. The case covers, too, look great. The polished chrome on, or the polished aluminum on it just looks really good. Yeah. The pipes look good. The headlight, all of the trim being chromed out, it looks good. They spent their money in the right place, and they made a pretty show-stopping motorcycle here. Yeah. And then when you get on it, you just feel cool, which is what you want out of your beginner motorcycle. Totally. You want it to not be overwhelming. You want it to be nice and easy to get along with, which thankfully we have fuel injection here. Yeah. Which big, uh, you know, big, big thing deal. on this yeah. motorcycle. For sure. Uh, it's just, it's an easy motorcycle to get along with. And I can really see that beginner quality there. Yeah. I think uh, the other elephant in the room for this motorcycle is, uh, for better or for worse, Royal Enfield is the pride of India. We see mm -hmm. it in our comments section, our Indian viewership is very, very proud of this motorcycle. And I think you guys have a lot to be proud of. This is what appears to be a reliable, fun, interesting offering for the beginner rider. Great value for money, interesting to ride. Is it gonna wow you? No, but not every bike needs to wow you. Maybe this is someone's first stepping stone into the wonderful world of two wheels. It has so many things to offer from WR250s to ZH2s, right? Yeah. There's a broad spectrum out there of motorcycles and maybe this is someone's first sampling and what a good first sampling this would be, you know? Yeah, no, I would have, if I were to do it all over again and I had ridden this next to my uh, Street 750, Maybe I'd have gotten this because it felt a little bit more authentically old school, you yeah. know? Uh, I could see myself starting over on this because I just adore this look right here just so much. Yeah, I think for me as well, there was a period when I was like 16 or 17 years old and all my buddies liked cafe bikes and I was trying to get one and all the ones I found were kind of ratty and old, but if something like this I'd seen, you know, for a relatively reasonable price, and enough to where you could save up as a young person, Yeah, pretty compelling offer, you know? The other thing we want to mention is that this is a motorcycle 
that we feel is really only gonna make sense for someone in that entry level category. I can't really see someone who has had two, three, four bikes wanting this motorcycle, right? I, I can't really. Understand. No, not not unless you want something that's a little bit different as like a city bopper. This yeah. this leaves a lot to be desired for me. A yeah. lot to be desired. Me too. It's it's really slow. And when I was riding <laughs> it around, all I was like is, can I have some torque, please? Yeah. Please, some torque. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then again, I ride around on a big stupid supermoto, so yeah. torque is kind of my bread and butter. Yeah, and as a dedicated track day guy, loves my race bike type of thing, yeah, th this this thing is not very confidence inspiring on the side of the tire. It, <laughs> it seems like the front and the rear are doing two different things at the same time when you're rolling down the road. So for me, in a more performance-oriented mindset, not exactly what I would on either. Um, that's why I rode my, you know, my, my desert sled. It's got this charm. It's an interesting bike. And this has some of that, too. And honestly, I would challenge any motorcyclist to jump on this and, and not, you know, walk away being like, well, that was an interesting, charming little bike, you know? Like, it's it's really not bad. It's I'm, definitely a lot better than I thought it would be. You're gonna have a hard time walking away from this motorcycle being like, this was an absolute piece of garbage. You're, yeah. you're not gonna see people say that. Yeah, except us, whenever we're joking about it. Yeah, you, got, you, got to, <laughs> you gotta realize that sometimes when we write stuff in the script, we do it to rile you up. We do it to rile you up, guys. <laughs> But uh, this was a very pleasant surprise today with the Royal Enfield. Um, again, I think there are worse bikes than this bike. I think there are way better bikes than this bike. I think that if you're an entry-level rider, you're trying to find something cool, something with a lot of curb appeal, good value for money, something you can have fun with, you can't go wrong with one of these. I, it, yeah. This is, this is one of the best beginner bikes out there, I think. Yeah, we'd agree. That's going to wrap up today's video on the Royal Enfield. We were half wrong and half right. Let us know in the comments down below. I'm sure you already did by the time you're watching this in the video. What you think about this bike, what you think we think about this bike, and anything else in between about this Royal Enfield over here. And thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yamino. Uh.